When we're leaving Jamaica for the first time, most of us have family members or friends see us off. Not many of us can say that we are driven in a truck full of family and that there was a host of people in other vehicles making the trip to the airport. My guest is performance driven. He's proved that in cricket and in the life insurance industry. He is the president of the Jamaica Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors, JIFA, for the 2019-2020 period. Whether on the cricket pitch or at the million dollar round table, he is about excellence. Some of his accomplishments could bowl you over. And I'm not spinning, how's that? Get ready for the Nehemiah Paris story. This is Profile. I am Faye Ellington. Thank you for joining, and I'm spending time with a cricketer and a life insurance executive. Nehemiah Perry, thank you for joining me. Not a problem. Tell me My so, pleasure. Why did you have to have a motorcade <laughs> to the airport the first time you were leaving Jamaica and you were still a teenager? Just remember, um, Faye, that I am the wash belly. And for the first time, the wash belly is leaving the nest. And it was, you know, a community, a small community like Reddy's Road, you know, a famous cricketer coming out of to that community, to go to Trinidad for the first time. And it was such an excitement. It's almost like it's a public holiday on the Reddy's Road, <laughs> right? So um, they were so excited. And, uh, you know, just truckload and buses and cars. In those days, you have the waving gallery. So, you know, <laughs> when they get to, the, to, the, to the, the, the airport, and I was at the top of the, the, the plane, step the, the step for the going into the, into the, into the, uh, the aircraft. Into the aircraft and you can just turn back and you're waving. <laughs> and all the cricketers at the time were just laughing at me, saying, Perry, what is this? You're the only person that I see a motorcade came <laughs> with you to the airport to see you all. How you know? old were you? I was, I just left Calabar. I was probably about um, 18. My you Lord, know. does it explain for those younger persons what the waving gallery was? At the Norman Manley International Airport, there was an area where people came to see off, others could go and stand, and so they wave you bye-bye, <laughs> and the person taking the aircraft waved bye-bye, and it was quite dramatic up there sometimes, you know. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I'm telling you. But here you were heading for Trinidad. When you got to Trinidad, what was the experience like playing cricket there? Well, I mean, the first time, you know, traveling outside of Jamaica, I was very excited um, to represent my country, obviously. And, you know, at the time, we had, you know, Jimmy Adams, you know, the Darren Dixons, you know, senior persons who actually just kind of take me under their wings and say, listen, don't be nervous, because you know you're going to be nervous. You're going to have a feel like butterfly in your stomach. But, um, you know, I weathered the storm quickly. And, I, you know, as a true professional, you know, you started... Um, on this note, you know, playing for Jamaica, you know, it's a big thing. And, you know, I really and truly represent myself very well. I got the second most wicket in the tournament. And, you know, we, we, I think we came about second or so, but it was, it was very, very good. How did your love for cricket start? Well, well if you know Redis Road area, um, where the Dunlap in primary school um, are, they, there's a cricket field there. And my father, uh, Leonard Perry, you know, now deceased, who told us that he was the one that cut that field and started the, the cricket, um, cricketing campaign there. And so it was the only thing to play, it was only was cricket. cricket. You Did know, he play cricket? Yeah, he played, but he wasn't so, so good. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he, he said he loved it, and he played a couple of games, and you know, he said umpire didn't, didn't like him. And he, <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> yes, and he gave him out all the time for ducks. So um, he, he retired very early, at maybe about 30 or something yeah. like that. <laughs> How many siblings do you have in your family? Well, it's, it was eight of us. One died. You know, incidentally, I'm a, actually a twin. Um, I have seen Perry, who has actually passed away um, at about age 39 or so. Uh, so it's eight of us. How many um, boys? Four boys, four girls. So do the boys play, the other boys play cricket too? Yeah, they, 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 they love the game. That's all I can say. They love the game. <laughs> And they supported me wholeheartedly. They, 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 they don't really um, miss the game. They, all the games, they have been there, um, supported me, my family, my brothers and sisters, all of them always at these games at Sabina Park. 
given me the support, full support. Let's go back to the first coaches that you would have had for cricket. Who are some of these people? Well, one of my um, idol um, was a gentleman by the name of Les Wright. And he was my first coach coming out of Calabar High School. And he taught me a lot. I must give him a lot of credit for my development right throughout my cricketing career because he instilled a certain values in me as a person to say, listen, if you want good, as we, my, my mother would say, if you want good, your nose have to run. And he said, you have to put in the work because there's no other way out than just put the work in, be disciplined in what you do, and um, it will pay off in the end. And then we have Ruan Kanai, who came in at a crucial stage of my career when I was just about 19, 1920, just to get on that crossroad now to get to Jamaica level. And um, he also was a valuable asset in my development because he, he showed us that cricket don't play with bat and ball most of the time. Cricket is played with, with your mind. And uh, if, you, if you have a strong mind, and if you, if you can assess situations and so on, you will do well. And those are the kind of things that I took from him. And that's why I, I think I've done very well at the, at the regional level. I think um, if, if, you, if you follow cricket, you will realize that um, only Courtney Walsh and Nikita Miller has actually more wicket in regional cricket than Perry for Jamaica. Yeah, Mayor Perry, all right. He's, <laughs> he's telling the story and it's his story. That's correct. Uh, since you're gone there, so you're going to mention Courtney Walsh, let us talk about a uh, test match, 1999, Sabina mm. Park, Australia, mm. West Indies. <laughs> what are your memories of that? Oh, how can I forget that? <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, my debut, uh, playing for the West Indies. As you know, I, I made my debut at a late age, at about 31, thereabout. And I actually kind of give up, you know, I, you normally make your debut at Test Cricket in your 20s. But to make a debut at 31, you know, it was like, wow, finally here. And the morning, I remember the, at the morning of the Test match, and I saw all the umpires them down, coming down, and everybody's getting ready. Um, you know, Brad, Lara, all these guys. Jimmy Adams. Jimmy Adams, and, and I'm like getting so nervous. I mean, they could see my heart just beating. <laughs> I'm like, wow, am I gonna be like playing a test match at Savannah Park in front of my own crowd? And I remember what Brian Lara said to me. He said, don't get nervous. It's only another game of cricket. Do what you normally do in a game. So if you normally bowl a certain way, just don't change anything. And uh, it kind of settled me down a bit. Went out, did well, got my first wicket, and then became one of the, I think, the second Jamaican to get uh, five wickets on test debut at Savannah Park. Wow. Yes. Wow. It was very good. Exciting match. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was good. Did, and we won the game. Is that the match when Brian Lara almost got out at 99 or something like that? Was that, was that the match? And then Courtney Walsh had come out... Or it no, was another occasion. No, it was another occasion. Another occasion. This occasion, he actually scored 200, mm -hmm. I think 213, and Jimmy Adams scored 90 something, and um, West Indies won that game convincingly. Fabulous game. You know, when you talk about cricket, your face. Yeah, because it, it's my passion. It's my passion. Uh, yes. So I, when did you retire? At what age did you retire? I retired about, I think, about 32, 33, thereabout. Um, I had a few injuries here and there, set in. And let me tell you, when you get up in the morning and you're not feeling it anymore. A burning desire to play and go out there in the sun and, and fight for your country. When you get that kind of feeling, it's like, ah, here we go again, stop. Ah, let us take away. a break. We're not going to stop, we're just taking a break. No and then we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Nehemiah Perry. Uh, cricketer at the school level, <laughs> at the local level, regional level, international level, we'll be right back. Thank you for watching.